Okay, we're live at the NWR warehouse, the headquarters of NWR Construction, with Ron Downey, the owner of NWR Construction, and mainstream media music reporter Sam Beagle. And we are here with Sam as the music reporter because Ron Downey is the guitarist for the country punk band Spare Tire. Just finished with the <laughs> rehearsal tonight. And uh, Ron, tell us a little bit about uh, Spare Tire. Well, we started about uh, nine years ago, and we've uh, been maturing it through the years, and we just keep playing out in different spots, and we just are really having a good time. We practice every Thursday night over here at the warehouse, and uh, just have a great time. It was a fun night tonight, and Sam, you are quite the, uh, uh, we're editing, you are quite the music reporter, <laughs> and you're having a good time, uh, but uh, you've seen a number of musicians and interviewed a number of musicians uh, in your time, both with mainstream media and before. Uh, what was your reaction to Spare Tire tonight? I thought they were good, and, and, and punk country? Country punk. Country punk, okay. You don't mix Country those, eh? Hey. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. More like surf. Um, definite, definitely an interesting, an interesting genre to listen to. Um, I liked it. I good. thought it was really good. And uh, so let's switch. We may switch back and forth here a little bit. But uh, during the day when you're not uh, rocking out to uh, country punk, uh, you are the owner of NWR Construction, a high-end construction firm in Portland. Uh, tell us about that business. Well, we specialize mostly in uh, interior cosmetic upgrades. And uh, so new skins on new things, so kitchens, bathrooms, and anything you need to do on your interior to make it look beautiful. And Sam, I know, I know you have some questions, so, uh, so uh, go ahead with those. All righty. Um, how did you get started in the construction well, actually, with the other uh, guitars in the band, with his father, we started when we were 15 years old, and we used to just fix up rental houses, and then his father would fix them up, we'd fix them up through the summer, and then he'd sell them in the wintertime, in the fall, wow. and then I just kind of, after high school, started doing that for a while, and then went to college, and when I got out of college, I had a real job for a while, and then got laid off from that through a bad economy, and started being a contractor, so I've been doing it for 26 years now. Wow. And if you had... Your yeah. dream construction job? What would it be? Well, I'd probably uh, actually. It's kind of evolved over the years. I used to specialize in craftsman style homes, but now it's uh, more contemporary, modern style. And so, uh, some new modern architecture would be great to uh, play with that. And it's uh, because of the simple straight lines mm. and uh, wood paneling, natural finishes is what I like most of. So it's. Uh, uh, that's the uh, that's what I like doing now. So, yeah. And I've got a question here. In this NWR warehouse, this uh, uh, garage rehears uh, rehearsal area for the band, you have uh, a number of pieces of art, a number of artifacts in here, uh, and I'll, I'll film a little bit more and edit it in, but uh, uh, tell us about maybe one thing in here that means the most to you or it has the most interesting story. Well, I guess I got a couple of things, like the uh, art here is from a local artist, Scott Sonnison, and he's actually done most of the uh, artwork in the... Uh, that would be me, Todd, yeah. <laughs> the bass player. Yeah. Uh, and he's done most of his work here in the, uh, for the uh, Heathman Hotel, did all the main art in the Heathman Hotel. Wow. And then all the other little artifacts and stuff, a lot of stuff belonged to my grandfather and just things I've collected over the years. And so, nothing really super special, but it's just kind of eclectic and uh, fun to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, any uh, any contact information or what kind of information do you want to leave for people to reach you, both as part of Spare Tire or NWR Construction? Well, if you need to look, uh, check out NWR Construction, it's nwrconstructionllc.com, and uh, look at my website. That sounds great. A good web page to, or a couple of websites to look at. Mm -hmm. And any other questions, Sam? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to um, keep this as, as part of uh, one interview, so... Because uh, I, I kind of want to edit this in and, and uh, have your review be a, be a part of the feature. So uh, last night you were at the Arlene Snitzer Concert Hall to hear uh, Steve Winwood and uh, uh, the, uh, the Wood Brothers, the Wood Brothers, uh, the opening band there. Uh, so uh, tell, us, uh, tell us about that show. Well, that was interesting. <clears throat> um, the Wood Brothers I'd never heard before. They were... 
I don't know, their lead singer looked like uh, the oldest Hanson brother, I thought, um, guitarist. And it was just, they were a three-piece, I don't know, power trio, if you will, uh, drum, bass, guitar. Uh, they were really good. I thoroughly enjoyed their set. It all sounded a little tinny, but I have a feeling that was the room. Um, and then Steve Winwood was the was the main act of the night, and the guy was great. Uh, you know, he came out, he did an hour and something like an hour and a half total, and uh, just tore it. Well, sort of tore it up. Um, his, uh, you know, he played all the stuff he was supposed to. He did stuff from Traffic and Spencer Davis and, and Blind Faith. And then, of course, he did a couple of his, well, probably more than a couple, um, of his own solo songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as, a, as a reporter, I have been told that I can give the good and the bad sides. Um, there was a bummer to it. it. The only thing I can think of that would have been a, a, a bad turn on that was uh, it felt like almost like a dinner show. It didn't. He didn't pump the crowd. You know, normally you go to a show and it's things get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and, bigger. and then the ending is just something freaking phenomenal. Um, it didn't feel like that last night. He did his encore was. Dear Mr. Fantasy, which is just, I think, a great traffic tune. And he ended with Give Me Some Lovin', which I actually thought should have been at the end of the show before he walked off and came back and did the encore. I yeah. think that would have been a better, a better way to end the show show end of it and then switch out. I think Higher Love was the last song he did before he went off stage to come back for the encore. And I, I think he should have switched the two. Mm -hmm. Because there was not... It seemed like there wasn't anybody sitting down, nor was there a dry chair in the house, so to speak, <laughs> after Give Me Some Lovin' was done. Yeah. So, all in all, if I were to give it a you know, an out of ten rating. I'd say it was probably a yeah, seven and a half or eight out of ten. That sounds good, and we'd like to thank Stephanie Viegas of PCPA for uh, helping us out with the tickets, along with uh, Brandon Frankel of CAA. Uh, two people really helped out uh, mainstream media, and you had good seats uh, oh. last night? Oh, my goodness. I was A to N back from the stage, clear over on the side, which... No big deal there. And, oh, the seats were fantastic. Didn't need binoculars, and that's, that's to me, that's always a good thing. All right. So. Sounds good. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.